this is going to make a lot more sense. I'm showing these pictures here. So the characteristics of, a, of an attractive human face. Okay. So there is a objective, there's a subjective side, but here's the objective side. This is what I wanted to show you before. Uh, the Fibonacci sequence. So in the 1200s in uh, Pisa, Italy, Leonardo Fibonacci, okay, uh, did some research and he went over to, he was an upper middle class family, went over to Italy, uh, to um, India and to Asia and brought back mathematical concepts. And he put that in a book called Gobera Bacci. And the sequence was uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. And the way you come to the sequence, you add the first number to the next number that goes to the next number in the sequence. And this come up with a ratio of a 1 to 1.618. When they looked at nature, a lot of things in nature have this ratio. The internal parts of a flower to the external parts of a flower have this ratio. And you can define a curve according to this numerical sequence. And that's the curve here of, um, of Fibonacci sequence in the golden ratio. It matches the curve of the Nautilus. And if you look at the ear, this is what I was trying to show you before, it matches the curve of the ear as well. This was used in, uh, in the Renaissance. So here is Mona Lisa's face that you can see now with uh, boxes that actually are 1 to 1.618. And same with the Parthenon, Notre Dame, um, and, uh, and actually the Last Supper has a lot of these ratios as well. We can evaluate faces this way. And here you can see, regardless of ethnicity, okay, the more a face has in balance with these ratios, the more attractive we tend to find these faces. So here was the, what I wanted to show you. Uh, we actually had a, um, uh, a research study. This was done in Germany. They had 10,000 university state students evaluate all these photos. And they said to them, what are the two photos that you like best? Okay, this will make some more sense now too. So um, looking at all these photos, um, they, they said, what are the two they like best? And, I, and I'll ask you, what are the two you like best? And now it makes more sense you're looking at it. And I will tell you, as I said before, 100% of people will choose five and six. And what is it about this? You're not consciously thinking about every part of this face. What happens is it's a subconscious basis. Your brain is looking for certain ratios, and that's how you determine what's attractive. I'm going to prove this to you in a bit. So the, there is an objective side. There is a subjective side to beauty. And here's the idea about using icons. So if you look at uh, uh, Julie Roberts here, here's what I'm trying to show you before, a large, smooth forehead going down to a smaller nose. Her Nose is smaller, so her eyes seem farther apart. She has a gull-shaped wing to her brow. She has a nice tapered jawline and a plump vermilion border to her lips. Brad Pitt does not have a gull-shaped wing brow. His brow is straight across. His nose is bigger, so his eyes seem closer together. He's more square jaw for chewing those masticatory muscles. And I said, too bad that they're not together anymore, but here's uh, um, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, and she has a more arched brow. He has a more straight across brow. Her nose is smaller. Her eyes seem farther apart. His nose is bigger. It seems closer together. She has a more tapered jaw. He has a more square jaw. So this was the picture I wanted to show you. Okay, so if we look at these two photos, okay, um, one looks like the man, one looks like the woman, okay? And if you look at these, your brain should be able to tell pretty quickly which is which. And so on the picture on the left, most people would say that is the woman correct right and you don't have to process it your brain sees that and the one on the right looks like the man turns out it's the same picture of the same person what they did is they digitally darkened the eye and mouth region one uh picture and not the other and it turns out that we look at eyes and mouth all the time and women intrinsically have more color or contrast to the eye and mouth region as compared to men and that's one of the ways that our brain will perceive who is male and who's female women know this and they will actually um, use lipstick and eyeshadow because something intrinsically in their brain says if this is darker, they're going to seem more feminine. That's true. Here's uh, Jessica Biel with, uh, looking a little more feminine with makeup on. The eyes are the window of the soul. We tend to look at the eye and mouth region. Okay, uh, This is what I was trying to show you before. Daniel Alam did this uh, um, uh, seminar talking about the important parts in a facelift, and he talked about Connie Culp. Okay. Okay, so here's Connie. Connie was shot in her face by a, uh, her estranged husband. It was a domestic violence case. And she had trouble building new relationships. People who knew her loved her, but other people would not really build friendships with her. So she underwent a, a face transplant. Okay, and here she is. And uh, with the face transplant, she looks more presentable. And she was willing to do this because sociability. We are social animals. We want to connect with, another, with one another. And just... Uh, just for her to stay in her house and just with people who already know her is not what she really wants. She wanted to be able to build new relationships. So she underwent this procedure. Our central face, this is what I'm showing you. Here's Barack Obama. And we take this, this is the part that Daniel Lam says is the most important part of the face for 
for face transplants. And also when I'm doing my rejuvenations, likewise, that's the two most important parts of the face for rejuvenation. And uh, here it is on a, um, here is uh, our former president's face on a different person. And you can still see our former president there, but we know who this is, of course, Brad Pitt, right? Okay, so this is what I'm gonna show you. Jamie Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis had this a quote, the first thing I look at a woman is her soul and then I check her out eyebrows. And this woman was, said that she looked very stern. Everyone thought she was very stern. I changed one thing in her and all of a sudden she looked more approachable. Do you see that? And if we look at that ratio I was showing you, if you look at this part of the ratio and you put it on the brow, you see how it reestablished that ratio to the face. That's one of the reasons I'm trying to show you that a lot of beauty is really objective, the way our brain is processing things. And that's how I work to get the brain of people seeing my patients to see them as more attractive and more approachable. Uh, here's a more male, male and female brow I was showing you before. So Brad Pitt's more straight across is a more classic uh, brow. Um, so on the other side, uh, we have a more, uh, uh, Rob Lowe has a more arched brow, more androgynous look uh, himself at the time, and that's more female brow. So our faces, I say, are a big, big factor in nonverbal communication. Um, I talked about the fact that 7% is what I'm saying, 38% is my verbal tone, and 5%, even you can see me now, right? My facial expressions and body cues and, and such. So we see each other, we look at the eyes and uh, facial skin first, and our conscious brain then tells our conscious, our subconscious brain tells our conscious brain how we feel about what we saw in those areas. Aging changes around the eyes, mouth, and skin can convey an impression of being tired, sick, and less vibrant. This is the picture I was trying to show you before. Of, um, of Mindy and she was working at Disney and she was getting different roles at Disney because of her facial expressions. And she was incredibly outgoing, but her face looked more mad or stern. So improvements we can make to those areas can have a positive effect on the ways that others perceive it, especially the eye and mouth region. So makeup, right? Or wearing flattering glasses, take advantage of this. With age though, sometimes makeup and glasses aren't enough. That's what people come to help for me with my expertise. This is Erin, and this is, I told you she was a PhD and she was working in a university. Uh, her students were at saying that she looked like she was drunk at times and she was trying to date as well because she was separated and she was trying to date and um, her lid area was not helping her in that regard. I helped her um, with these things called festoons um, in the lower lid and with uh, the upper lids and all of a sudden her whole face looked in it, um, as it communicated in a different way. She looked more approachable, more awake, uh, more attractive as well. And, uh, she was the patient that I brought on air when I was featured on the show called The Doctors. Okay? Uh, this was another patient of mine, uh, Donna, uh, who had festoons as well. When I was on Dr. Oz, that was the patient I had on the show with me um, for Dr. Oz, and I, I helped her as well. Festoons are known as cheek pouches, uh, double eyelid bags. Uh, they form on the cheek and in the lower eyelid there. You can see different um, options here, or different types of cases here. Um, it forms this area on the cheek. I use lasers to help this. I've uh, created a book chapter about this with my mentor, Sterling Baker. And here's an example of uh, three months after uh, uh, treating some pretty bad festoons. And here's uh, Mindy, and this is before and after I helped her with her condition with her festoons. She looks much more approachable and she's getting different roles now for herself at Disney. So this is the area of the new research I was talking about, about um, discrimination uh, lawsuits. So uh, this was uh, the Federal Bur Reserve Bank of uh, St. Louis was looking at links between appearance and wages and uh, people with below average appearance earned about 9% less, those with above average appearance about 5% more, a 14% swing between those extremes. This was the uh, article in the New York Post, you can see that now. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to Howard Stern and show you this in a moment so you can actually see the episode. Um, but they had me evaluate candidates for mayor, and then everyone, I didn't realize everyone who read the New York Post, but Howard did, and he called my people, and he wanted me to evaluate people on his show for their nonverbal communication and ways they could uh, change their appearance to improve the way the world relates to them as well. And here it is. Uh, well, it says here, Howard needs nothing. He's so handsome. Oh. Like, beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> uh, let's see. Loss of facial volume. Like Fred, you need to fill in all those heavy. I have those huge lines. Like, I know. You yeah, always how, talk how about them. Would, would, I, I mean, know. honestly, it's a real loss of volume. How for you, what I was saying, really, the eye and the mouth. So the eye area, I was saying, if you could, if you could, it would be surgery, okay? But if Go you ahead. could do surgery for the eyelids, I do that stuff with lasers. Lays the eyelids? Mm -hmm, the upper eyelids. And then if we could add volume back to the lower face, there's actually a product. This isn't surgery, mind you. There's a product called Sculptra. 
And what it is is the product we use is a facial filler. It takes a while to work, but once it's set up, it lasts years. He would be a great candidate for that, Howard, because if you could add volume to that area, you look at your after, it's really, I mean, you look like you, but it's just, I, I look like, like gorgeous. You look like a softer you. I look, <laughs> yeah, a, a better me. Yeah. Now, Doc, is any of this stuff, that, when, when I hear women are injecting rat poison into their face, <laughs> and, and, you know, that's basically what I, 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 I don't get, like, I'm not doing anything. I mean, what's the difference at this point? I'm a mess. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> You know, it's just, yeah, it's just personal. It's something you want to do. I'm just saying there are options for people if they want to do these things. You You're know? saying you get rid of all that shit on my face like that in the <laughs> after picture? Is that accurate? Yeah, I think, I mean, really the volume. Yeah, if you have, the volume is the most powerful thing for you. Volume. In other words, what do you stick in my face to give me volume? There's a, uh, there's a product called Sculptra, and what it is is that there's a suture material that we use in surgery that makes collagen, and they, they take mm. advantage of this, and they make it into little tiny bits. They put it in the face, and then the body will build its own collagen around these products. Really? Wow. Yeah. They, and it, How long does that take? It, I mean, it, it takes about an hour to do. Um, what happens, actually, I have, I have newscasters who I do this for in my area on the, on the evening news, and I like this because you look better gradually. What happens is you get the result. It goes down. You get a view of what it looks like. It goes down in about two days as the water resorts, and then the particles that are left over about eight weeks, the body responds to and builds collagen all right. over the place. Wow. And so each week you get better and look better and better and better. And Imagine how gorgeous I'd be. I'm a and then when it start, does it start to go bad again? Oh, so yeah, it's yeah. Like <laughs> you know what it's like? It's like um, Charlie. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like he, he was retarded, and then in the book Flowers for Algernon, he becomes a genius, and then he slowly starts becoming retarded. <laughs> and that's the bitch. I got to admit, Dr. Shiner's after picture does look way better on me, but, uh, you know, hey, I don't know. Then you got to go do all this stuff. Uh, Dr. Shiner, give yourself a plug here, or I'll give it to you. For more information on Dr. Adam Shiner's practice, go to adamshinermd.com. Hey, thanks, Dr. Shiner. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Thank pleasure. Bye-bye. Take care. Well, consider. now we know there's something we can do. <laughs> I thought it was hopeless. I would say, without a doubt, 100 percent of the people in Hollywood have something going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's how they stay there's looking too, good. There's too much at stake. They, yeah. they, they're, they're, you know, they're at the big game. Absolutely. Think, that's you know, it's the same thing. It's like baseball players do steroids. Both people do Botox. Well, maybe we got to go visit Dr. Shiner. <laughs> I think that's what you're saying. <laughs> Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that, <laughs> that little piece. So, you know, I talk to Howard about the same thing. It's about the eye and mouth region. That's the most critical areas for rejuvenation. So here's another say. This was actually a patient of mine. He's a, he's a judge. He's a federal judge. Um, and people were coming to him and saying, you know, Your Honor, uh, would you like to re retire your chambers because it looks like you're pretty tired? And he didn't want to come across as tired. Uh, so I did surgery to help him. Uh, he's in his 70s. And uh, now afterwards, he looks even younger than that. Well, this is a story of uh, unintended co consequences because uh, he was married for a long time to his wife. She was in her 70s too. So this was him after the surgery and this was her. And they went out socially and uh, people came out at, over to him and said, Your Honor, can you please introduce me to your mom? <laughs> and, uh, and of course, uh, women want to be known as nothing but the beautiful partner of the person they're, they're with. So uh, she came in to see me and I looked at her. And I said, okay, let me see what I could do. And I I realized that her skin was really the biggest issue. We're going to talk about skin here in a bit. But I said, if I could improve the skin uh, and the eyelid area, that would make a big impression on her. So I did a procedure for her. And uh, now she looks like a much younger version of herself. And now they're a nice matching uh, pair. <laughs> uh, this is actually a, um, a person who was uh, a therapist. And the same thing was happening to him. Uh, people were saying to him, you know, he thought people thought that he was falling asleep on his clients. So... Um, it wasn't about vanity, it was about communication. He doesn't want to look like he's falling asleep on his clients when they want someone who's um, awake and engaged with them. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit here about, um, I could talk about the three Ds of, it, of aging, deterioration of the skin, deflation of the face, and descent of the uh, eyelids and face. The first thing is skin. I think it's important. I think that I'd like to educate you here today. So the skin really is our largest organ. We think about usually our, our liver being an organ, our heart being an organ, our lungs, but the skin is an organ. It really is, and it's our largest organ. Its job is protection. It's a fluid barrier. It's our, our organ for sensory input, right? And it helps us make vitamin D in the, in the sunshine. This is a top layer of the skin. I know it's a pretty graphic slide, but the top area called the epidermis, starting with that purple layer looking up, okay, those, those purple cells, that's the living cell layer of the epidermis. That's a basal cell layer. It makes all the cell layers above it. So if it's healthy, all the cell layers above it are healthy. If it's not healthy, the cell layers above it are not healthy. Below that, we have the dermis. And the dermis is that uh, 
uh, underneath that, that uh, purplish area, it's those um, kind of salmon color and the red color and then the white color below that. That dermis has collagen fibers, elastic fibers and such. So our skin ages from passage of time, but mainly from sun exposure. So there's normal aging, okay, that happens from genetics and there's premature aging. And the biggest thing of this is actually photoaging. Sun protection, the single best way to prevent skin aging is protecting us from the sun. 90% of everything you know in terms of wrinkles, age spots, and skin discoloration is due to sun or tanning bed exposure. So when the sun comes down on us, okay, there's visible light, allows us to see one another, and then there are invisible rays, and these are called the ultraviolet rays. Uh, there's the UVA ray, okay, which is a long wavelength. If you look at the picture on the uh, right, you have the epidermis there and the dermis, okay? The UVA will go through the epidermis into the dermis where it will fracture elastic and collagen fibers allowing our skin to sag and droop. It's, a, it's present all day long from sun up to sundown and it will even penetrate clouds and car windows. We call it A for aging. UVB, which is in yellow in this slide, okay, only goes through the epidermis a little bit into the dermis. It creates sunburn, most prevalent from about 10 to two or four o'clock in the afternoon. UVC is toxic to life and thankfully it's absorbed by the ozone. SPF is sun protection factor. It's regulated by the FDA. It only applies to protection from UVB. We now have, okay, in the US, a measurement for UVA, and we're looking for things that are broad spectrum and water resistant, and sun protection has to cover both UVA and UVB. Every time that we're outside, we get a little bit of radiation and it affects our skin, even when we go to our home to the mailbox or driving a car. So it's important uh, to wear sun protection every day in all exposed skin areas. And here's a picture I was going to show you. So when you look at this picture, about how old do you think that she looks, okay? Right, people look, she looks like 100, 110. She's only 58. Amazing, right? She's an American Indian, she's a migrant worker, and that's the effect of UV damage over time. This gentleman, right, he looks like he might be, what, you know, 40, 50? And he's 78, he's a Tibetan monk. He was indoors a lot of his life meditating. This picture actually, uh, I heard about this woman. She worked in a corporate environment and she went through the uh, ranks of her company and she uh, got a promotion, she got a corner office and the, the, the corner window would warm her cheek every day. Okay, you can see the difference on the two cheeks. So do you remember what ray will make it through windows? That's UVA damage over time. Striking, isn't it? Here's another picture. This, uh, woman, this is a truck driver actually in Australia and one side of his face was affected, uh, was facing the sun during his career. You can see the difference in the skin on the two sides. And uh, I computer generated this, but you can look at the difference between what the sun was doing if we had both sides be like that right side of his face uh, versus not or like or un -sun or more sun protected like the left side of the face. Okay, enough about damage, how to repair it. Well, medical skincare, tretinoin and hydroquinones can, uh, can help. And then there's medical procedures that we do. Uh, chemical peels, laser skin care, laser skin resurfacing. Here's medical care. Um, this woman was a tennis player. She had darkness along her jawline. This is medical skin care. This woman also, these small spots she had on her cheek and in the temple area, we were helped with medical skin care. This woman um, was a little bit darker, but she had darkness on her upper lip and on her chin. And this is medical skin care that helped to improve that uh, darkness. So we can do this on any skin type. And these sun-kissed cheeks, these little freckles on her face, but I think she looks much younger and much healthier when she doesn't have all that damage. And that's what medical skincare can do. Next, we have uh, laser skin resurfacing. Lasers, skin resurfacing, we use a laser. We take off layers of the skin. The skin regrows itself, and we have better quality skin. Here's an example of that. Um, lower lid surgery with helping those spots in the cheek. This is laser skin resurfacing for the uh, cheek area there. This woman had deep lines around her lips and people say, well, this isn't real. This is real. This is what we can do. If we can injure the skin and the skin repairs itself, you can have pretty incredible results. This woman's a little bit older, same thing. This, the, the lines on her lips and the, the pigment spots on her face, right? This is um, the way to, to help people with, with um, these lines. Well, I learned things. I mean, my patients really become my teachers. And a couple of years ago, um, I learned that my procedure not only just helps with wrinkles, it helps with sun damage as well. This was a woman who came to me years before. She had a low eyelid, um, something known as a levator dehiscence. I raised the eyelid, the upper lid, and I worked on the bags of lower lid. I did a laser on the outside skin so you can see the wrinkles and the pigment looks better in the lower lid. She came back to me two years later um, and she was erupting in skin lesions all over, over her face except the area I treated two years prior. Can you see that? 
Pretty striking there, right? So lesions everywhere except where I treated two years prior. This taught me that not only was I making the skin look better, but I fundamentally, fundamentally made it healthier as well. I then treated the rest of her face. And this is her after a month after treating the rest of her face. So I got her skin healthy. This taught me now that I could help people with serious sun damage. This woman came to me, she was sent by her dermatologist because her dermatologist was constantly freezing things off her face. She had a lot of sun damage when she was young. And this is her um, after recovery. Right? And you can see the incredible difference here in the skin, how it looks healthier. This one came from Miami, the same thing. She was uh, from Miami Sun, um, and I did surgery on her lower lids and on the whole face. And this is her after um, this procedure. And her skin looks better, I like that, but you see the lines in the forehead, how they're better, the pigment is better on her face. This is all the effects of laser skin resurfacing with my reset procedure to make not just the skin look better, I think it looks better, I agree with that, it's healthier. And having that duality, so if you can look better but then your skin is healthier, you don't have to visit the dermatologist as much in the future, I think it's a win-win. She actually comes with her daughter and uh, she comes up from Miami, I'm in Tampa, and uh, now they actually look a little bit closer together in age. We do it for men, this is my patient Francisco, and. Uh, his wife was a patient of mine and he came to see me. Now he looks like, um, I would say he looks like his younger brother, right? Older brother on the left, younger brother on the right. He goes back to Italy now and people are like, Francisco, you know? What happened to you? And so anyway, uh, now he's a much younger version of himself, the younger brother. And that's what I like about this. You don't look like an odd version of yourself. You look like yourself, just a younger version. This woman told me that she felt invisible. Uh, she would go out to stores and people wouldn't wait on her. And, and I did a procedure to help her with her lower lids and the bags in the lower lids and then on those lines on the face. And people have said to me, this can't be the same person. Um, so actually what I thought I'd include here in this presentation is let's hear her speak to us a little bit. Here we go.
Okay, so I heard that um, maybe the volume wasn't loud enough there, but hopefully you could read the subtitles there. Here's another example of this sort of uh, sun damage removal. This woman had these deep, deep lines in the forehead and the skin. And as I was saying, that's part of um, this idea of health uh, and of beauty is the skin being clear and unblemished. And you can see here how this looks much more youthful when we've, uh, and it's much healthier too, that we have made the skin better with this procedure. Where else do we use these, uh, these lasers? Well, we can use these actually to treat moles as well. Some people have moles on the face and the moles are actually like a, uh, um, an iceberg. You see the tip of the iceberg, you don't see the full extent of it. And to fully remove these moles, we actually have to cut them out. That leaves a scar. Some people will shave them, but with in an office using a blade, sometimes you don't, uh, it's not fully removed or it leaves a scoop. So patients, I said, become my teachers and I was able to use um, my laser to actually help a patient with a mole. This woman had two moles actually on her nose uh, near, the, uh, near the nostril, the, called the nasal ala. And I was able to treat them and flatten them with this laser. Um, I biopsied them first to make sure they weren't dangerous and then was left over, I flattened. And now it's years later and she doesn't have those uh, moles anymore. It doesn't take away attention. This gentleman had one in his sideburn and this is another example of treating uh, those moles. Face deflation. Um, so when we're young, we have these full, uh, full faces with a lot of volume, almost like a triangular face, more volume up in the face and less, less so in the lower face. Um, and then as we age though, the, the triangle will bottom out and becomes more square or boxy. And here's Rita Hayworth over time. It's almost like we have an inflated beach ball when we're younger and we age, we have a deflated beach ball. And here's a picture. So here we have a tulip standing upright and people will say, well, gravity is acting more on me. The, gravity actually, as I know, doesn't change, okay? So gravity is acting any more on this tulip in one picture versus the other picture. What has it lost? It's lost the water that's holding that upright, correct? So it lost its volume. And that's what happens to our faces too. We lose volume as we age. And if we can restore volume, that can be very powerful in terms of nonverbal uh, communication. So I do a procedure called radiant lift where I can improve uh, volume in the face and skin at the same time. And this woman had like a jowl, you can see it in the, around the chin area there. Um, and we're able to add volume back so we can straighten the jawline um, in this patient so she doesn't look like she's uh, frowning anymore. This woman, her name's Peggy, she's very sweet. She called this her older bitchy face because <laughs> people thought she was mad all the time, but she wasn't, she was the sweetest woman. But her face was giving this impression of being mad or, or, or bitchy. And in helping her with volume, okay, this is non-surgical, I was able to actually push up the corners of the mouth. And in doing that, I was able to restore her to a less, a more approachable, more attractive version, not, and less bitchy. Now, this is what people are concerned about. They're concerned about, they've seen these pictures of faces that get out of balance, right? Um, here we have you know, a famous uh, former celebrity. Um, with cheeks that are uh, too big. Uh, here, the cheeks are too low you know, in that, for a woman. Uh, they don't belong that low in a woman. Uh, we have lips that get out of, uh, out of proportion. So that's what we're concerned about. Here's a patient of mine, um, and I've been helping her. And uh, this is her. How many years older does she look in the picture on the right, about? In the comments, oh yeah, three, five, 10, yeah, seven, 10, I agree. Turns out that I first started helping her here, and this is three years later, and you can see how we can restore volume to the lower jaw, the skin, we can make the lips look prettier. We wanna make sure the lips balance the face the correct way so they don't uh, look uh, strange for the face, and that's what we do in our practice. The last thing is I wanna talk about panfacial deflation. So this woman actually wasn't a patient of mine, but she was going to someone, I saw this picture of, of, uh, of her, and she was building up her cheeks and her lips. And if you look at this picture with me, doesn't it look strange? Something looks out of proportion here. You have young lips and young cheeks, but the rest of the face doesn't match. Well, it turns out that she's very hollow in the temples and in the area below the cheeks. And really, we want a face to be in balance. So this isn't what we would ever do, but we can use something called sculpture. I was talking to Howard Stern about this on his show. This woman had hollowing in the temples. You see how in, in this after picture, when she's built collagen, her cheeks and her, her temples look um, more filled and it actually gives them a, a better ratio to the face. We do this for men too, right? He had a little hollowing in his cheeks and how we were able to give volume back to the cheeks and the temples. This woman actually, she taught me um, 
about this. She said when she was younger, she had volume in the temples. And this is a fat, this is an illustration of fat pads that exist in the face. And you can almost see that one in front of the ears, okay? That blue one that's in front of the ears, that's probably the one that's missing in her. So if we add that back, what that would do. So she's in her 50s in both pictures, but with the volume, she looks like she's back in her 30s, right? Volume is very, very powerful. We can use volume for noses too. We can use volumes to, to actually take nose bumps and, and push them um, into a straighter configuration. This woman had a bad nose job years ago. The, eye, the nose was actually crooked. I was able to fill in on the, uh, on, when you're looking at it, on the right side of the photo and then create a light line down the nose that makes the nose look straight. You notice in the picture on the left, okay, your brain, you don't think about it, you see the nose. On the picture on the right, you ignore the nose, you look at the eyes and the mouth, right? And that's the subconscious brain I'm talking about. That's when I, this whole talk is about. This true definition of beauty is a subconscious basis, and that's how we can help things by taking attention that's being taken away, such as a nose that doesn't look straight and making it straighter. That will allow us to concentrate on the eyes and mouth, which is the most powerful parts of the face for communication. See that light line as it comes down the nose there? Eyelid surgery is the last thing I was going to talk about. Um, we can do surgery for upper and lower lids. This is a man who had that done with the laser for the lower lids. This makes him look you know, more refreshed and less tired. This woman had low eyelids and we raised them. She said that she was playing a uh, bridge and her former bridge partner said, you know, honey, you should go back and get some more rest. You look like you're tired. And uh, she didn't want that. So by helping her with uh, the lower and upper lids, we made her look more awake and refreshed. Uh, we do it for this gentleman too. He had some more puffiness underneath the eyes and we were able to help him with that. Um, Asian lids we have to tr treat specifically so we make them look more natural for, uh, for the Asian lid. We don't want to make them look um, uh, too Western if they don't want to look that way. Last thing we do is sometimes is with brows. We can do brow surgery um, where we can raise brows. Uh, this is a bigger surgery. I was going to show you one other thing we can do, though, is without surgery. This was a woman that we showed you before. We we're asking, what do we do to help her? This was that example about that Fibonacci curve. We can use Botox and change the balance of forces in the face where we can actually raise the face, raise the brows. It looks amazing. This is without surgery. And when she smiled before, her brows would collapse. Now the brows actually stay elevated when she smiles. So finishing up here, I want to let you know that on Amazon, you can uh, download this book. If you like the talk, please download the book. Um, it's on, on Kindle, uh, and you can get that today uh, on Amazon. And here's a special offer I wanted to make. Okay, so for everyone who tuned in, thanks for, for staying for the whole talk, because I'm sorry that the first part that uh, I didn't realize that I didn't have the share screen going, but thank you for, for watching. So what I want to do is that for people who've watched this, okay, um, I want to offer a $1,000 credit okay, toward any future surgical uh, rejuvenation for those who book a virtual consult before noon on Friday. <clears throat> we're going to put a link of this in the comment section uh, on Zoom, and we're going to put it on the comment section for the simulcast we have on Facebook, too. This link, though, if you don't, if you don't get that link, take a, a screenshot of this, or take a picture of this, that, that blue address there. What you want to do then is you want to uh, make an appointment there, and when you uh, make the appointment, you can mention the, the code True Definition 2020 to receive your credit. If you do this before noon tomorrow, that's about 24 hours, okay, uh, you will get a thousand hour credit. If you can't make it uh, before noon tomorrow, uh, but between, between noon Friday and Monday, at that point, you get at least $500 credit uh, until, and the, the final deadline is on Monday at noon. So the best thing is if you can do it from the end of this lecture until noon tomorrow, if you can uh, go to that link and sign up and uh, mention uh, the call uh, when you book. You, you don't have to have the virtual consultation. You just have to book it by that point. And when you get on the call, mention True Definition 2020, and you'll be able to give you that credit. So take a screenshot of this. It was wonderful connecting with everybody here today. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing here for a minute and see if there uh, are uh, any questions that people have. Okay. Okay, and I see here they couldn't see the slides. I know. I, I'm so sorry. I had to. Uh, okay, so now everyone's getting back to me. They're they're actually able to see the slides. Okay, so very good. So um, finishing up, I I want to do the following again. I want to thank all. First of all, you know, thank you for watching. Thank all the first responders, the doctors, the nurses, the staff in the hospitals, the politicians who helped pass the stimulus package and you for staying home to flattening the curve. These are difficult and historic times, 
but uh, working together, okay, this will pass and we can get through this together. And um, thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited uh, that I was able to share this with everybody. Um, and we'll put the, uh, let's put the link here. Um, let's see if it'll work. We'll put the link for the, uh, the code here. Hold on a second here. If I can get to it. Okay, so here's the link. There it is in the, uh, in the link for the uh, webinar. It's right there uh, in the chat to all people. So if you copy that or click that, that should lead you to the, um, uh, to the correct place so you can book your company consult. And once again, if you will uh, mention the uh, True Definition 2020, um, that will give you the $1,000 uh, discount. Uh, the $1,000 is if you do this between now and noon on Friday, you'll get the $1,000 discount. If you can't make it by then, that's fine. From noon on until about Monday at noon, uh, you can get a $500 credit. And it's just want to help people if they want you know, to look better. We want to help give a little discount to people during this time if they want to come and see us. Um, and let me see here if, uh, if there were questions that people had. Hold on a second here. Oh, okay. So uh, one question was, uh, and if you want, you can write a question in the chat there if people have questions. But I have one here uh, that was sent privately. It says, what is a resting bitchy face? <laughs> well, um, as we age, okay, our teeth and jaw will change, uh, more so in women, actually. It will actually revert backwards. And as the teeth and, and, and jaw changes, the skin will fall in those folds. It's a volume loss. And that volume loss will cause a downturn of the mouth. And that's what's known as a, a bitchy face. In some younger people, they actually have a muscle that pulls the corner down. Uh, and we can help them with uh, Botox suction in the corners that can bring up the corner of the mouth. So that's what that is. Um, See, so here's another one. How do you reverse past sun damage? This was a private message someone sent me. Um, well, see, when the sun comes down, there's ultraviolet rays that will hit the DNA, call these things, causing things called thymine dimers in the cell layers. That leads to irregular cells that lead to skin cancers. So if we can use the laser and get below the level where the sun hits, which is what we do with our reset procedure, and the skin grows back, those new cells have never seen the sun. That's why this procedure can make the skin look better and healthier. Uh, here's another one that private message. Uh, how long does a five minute nose job last? Usually lasts about a year. Um, a lot of times though, when I do that, uh, people can build collagen. And we've had uh, noses last many years, so I have two, three, five years even on in specific patients, but uh, it can be about a year or longer. Um, let's see. And how do you get natural results from cosmetic treatments? Um, paying attention to ratios, and that's what we were talking about, uh, and natural balance. That's how we get uh, results that look good, that are powerful, yet subtle, okay? And that's what I want, powerful, yet subtle. We want it to look more natural, and that's what we can do when we pay attention to these ratios. Well, I want to thank everyone for attending today. I'm going to end the call now. And once again, if you will uh, go to that link below before noontime tomorrow and set up a virtual consultation, uh, you can get, um, I mentioned True Definition 2020. Uh, you can book a virtual consult. You don't have to have the consult by tomorrow. You just have to book it by tomorrow. And you'll be able to have a $1,000 credit toward any future surgical rejuvenation. Uh, and for those who can't make it by noon tomorrow, if you do it between noon tomorrow to noon on Monday, you can do the same thing. You'll just get a $500 credit. After noon on Monday, then uh, this is over. Uh, there'll be no more discounts. But thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in. And uh, this was great. Bye.